Hey guys, so it is the night before my surgery. I'm all bathed and ready for tomorrow. Um, but I know when I was planning, oh, I'm shaky, sorry. Haven't eaten all day. Um, when I was looking up like what to pack in my hospital bed kind of thing, what I need, there was no videos online, absolutely zero. There's videos for like babies or gastric bypass surgeries, but nothing for what I'm having or even the surgeries that are similar. So I decided I'm gonna show you what I'm bringing and then I will update like all, once I'm home, I will do like an add on to this video saying like what I used, what I didn't use, what was a waste and uh, if there was anything I forgot. So let me show you what I got. So this is what I'm working with right now. I have to repack that. I kind of just shoved everything in it right now, but I'm gonna show you what's in it anyways. And then this is a portable fan because I need to sleep with fan. I got a fan on every night. So <laughs> portable fan, that's my bag with clothes and a house robe. Again, I'll show you in a second. I'm bringing a small throw blanket and my pillow. And then I got my body pillow because I sleep with it every night, but I'm thinking I'm not gonna need it at the hospital because I'm, I highly doubt I'm gonna be sleeping on my side at all. So I'm gonna leave that at home. And then if I need it, I'll have my husband bring it up to me after. So let me show you what's in these two bags. So in my clothes bag, I just have a nice comfy house coat. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to use this because I'm gonna have IVs and stuff. So I don't know, but I wanna have it just in case. And then slippers with like good soles, like no slip soles on it. Um, a couple pairs of fuzzy socks with the grips on the bottom as well, because in the hospital, my feet always, always get cold. And so that, that's why they're fuzzy. And then of course the no slip. And then a um, couple pairs of underwear and literally just one outfit. Um, I'm gonna go in comfy clothes and then I'm assuming I'm just gonna be in a hospital gown the entire time pretty much but I had a pair of clothes just in case um, and then of course I have the clothes that I'm going in okay so in this really big bag in the front I just have my reading glasses and a eye sleep mask and then I have a big thing of lotion my hands are always dry and I heard in the hospital it gets even more dry especially after surgery and stuff and you can't shower for a couple days so lotion this is just a container of pens um, keep in mind that a lot of the stuff I brought is also for the videos I make my YouTube channel and that kind of stuff so obviously you wouldn't need half of that stuff but yeah so there's pens and stuff to do my notes um, and activity books um yeah and then a book to read and i'm bringing a power bar because i have a lot of electronics to plug in and stuff and then a large extension cord and zip ties because my plan is to zip tie the power bar to my bedside table so that it's not like slipping all over the place um but we'll see how that works out so then i had i got this water bottle because I feel like I'm gonna have a hard time like tipping my head back. So this has a built-in straw gum, just because my mouth is gonna feel gross, I know it, so I need gum. My laptop, I'll go through that in a sec. This is like my planner, so um, my daily gratitudes and video ideas and that kind of stuff. A notebook, I'm not gonna bring my big video binder that I have that I write all my video stuff down in. So I just brought a notebook to jot down notes. This is just a small makeup pack. I'm probably never gonna do my makeup while I'm in there, but I decided to bring just a few small essentials, like just in case I feel like I wanna do something with myself, um, it's in there. This pack, let's see if I can do this with one hand. This is my electronics bag. So it just has a bunch of different chargers, my AirPods, um, my external hard drive, um, my lapel mic in case 
because I do have some videos to edit. So in case I feel up to editing and doing voiceovers. Um, and yeah, just a bunch of chargers and headphones and cubes and stuff. And then this is my toiletry bag. Now there's some stuff in here that, like these are the bags that um, we take camping every time we go camping or on vacation. So a lot of this stuff ha was already in here and I just threw some other stuff in. So there might be quite a bit of random things in here. Um, but <clears throat> like these are just eye masks, probably not gonna do it, but they were in there. Um, a little container of hair elastics, bobby pins, headbands. I just got my hair done. I purposely got it done as close to my surgery date as possible so that I really don't have to worry about it for the first couple days, especially since the hospital told me to shower and stuff like the night before because it's going to be a couple days before I can get into the shower. So I really don't have to do much, but I have this just in case I need to put my hair up or anything. Um, some wet wipes, baby wipes, makeup wipes. Again, probably won't even be really doing my makeup, but in case, even if I just want to freshen up, these are these are a really good brand. Uh, deodorant, migraine meds, um, because they don't have these um, this medication at the hospital. They only have a different kind in an injection form, so they told me to bring those. I'm bringing my melatonin just because I already have a really hard time sleeping. I probably won't because of all the drugs I'll be on, but I'd rather have it just to be safe than sorry. Dry shampoo, just because, I mean, I'm not gonna be able to shower for a while, so we'll see. But again, with me just getting my hair done, I probably won't even need this. But again, I wanted to have it just in case I need it because my husband's gonna have no idea if I tell him I need this. He'd have no idea what it is. Uh, body spray. This is like a leave on face mask. It came in my Fab Fit Fun box, so I don't even know. But it's like a hydrating mask. You kind of just leave it on. You don't have to wash it off or anything. So that could be nice, especially if my skin does get very dry in the hospital. This could be helpful. Hairbrush, of course. Um, chapstick. Toothpaste. Nail file. Um, these are just little sample packs of face wash and moisturizer. Again, won't be able to get in the shower, so that's good to freshen up. Toothbrush and little travel shampoos and flossers and stuff. So this stuff was all in here because of our camping bag. This is our normal camping bag. Um, don't know if I'll even be using it, but it's there if I need it. Sorry, the lighting's so terrible here, but that is what I am bringing to the hospital. And like I said, I will absolutely let you guys know what I used, what I didn't use. Surgeon says I will be in there for five to seven days, depending on healing. So I just wanted to be prepared. I, I'm assuming for the first couple days, I'm probably just gonna wanna sleep the whole time. Who knows, maybe I'll sleep the entire time and not use anything. But again, I wanted to be prepared um, just so that I had the stuff if I felt up to it. Um, and yeah, I will let you know what I used and what I didn't use and anything I forgot. And I will see you guys in the morning. Bye. Hey guys. So I am nine days post-op. Um, I just came home from the hospital yesterday. So like I said, I'm going to update you on my hospital bag, what I used, what was a waste and anything I forgot that I needed to be, have be have be brought up yeah sorry if I look a little rough I'm still not in the mood to really do anything with myself I'm still healing pretty pretty good but I mean I'm still healing and I I really don't have much energy so I'm gonna break this into like categories okay so the first category I'm calling like the comfort category so as you know I brought my own pillow and blanket which really were more of like a comfort thing Obviously, they have pillows and blankets there, but I I really enjoyed having my own pillow and my own blanket. Mind you, the hospital is really warm, so I didn't use my fuzzy blanket so much, but it was still just extra comfort having like something of my own personalness, right? Adding on to that, um, my fan that I brought was an absolute lifesaver. I had that thing on 
24 7 because like the hospital was really really warm i don't know if it's because of covid and everything but the fans like the vent in the ceilings and stuff they weren't really if they were working at all they were really low so um my fan was i sleep with a fan every night anyways even in the winter so i i wanted to have it for sleeping comfort but um it definitely helped like i still woke up sweating even with the fan on basically so that was great definitely get yourself a portable fan if you usually sleep with one i know at in the beginning of this video i said i was leaving my body pillow at home because i didn't know if i was going to use it or not i did end up having it be brought up um after about wednesday wednesday night my epidural came out um and then i could actually move my body and roll on my side and stuff so the last couple days i was I'm a side sleeper, so the last couple days I was able to sleep on my side and stuff. And this was just because I sleep with it between my legs. Um, and it was just the, uh, it would kind of keep me propped up behind me as well, if that makes sense. The one thing I did forget that I needed to have, needed to have be brought up. I don't know why that's not sounding right to me. Needed to, yeah, needed to have brought up to me okay um is my he heating pad um this was again a godsend i slept with it every night um just wrapped like a little sheet around it and held it on my belly for um the cramping and just the tenderness and the incision pain i had this as well as a pillow on top of me and that was really like the most comfortable way i could sleep especially when i was still on my back not on my side yet i had this on my stomach and then with a pillow on top and I just kind of held it all night, basically. I do, <clears throat> I have seen um, online, there are weighted heating pads, which I think probably would have been amazing, especially since, like I said, I had that, that extra pillow and I was kind of like just holding my stomach. I think a weighted heating pad would have been great. Um, that would have been very comfortable. I also saw someone online mention a weighted ice pack. I didn't try ice. I could see how that could probably really be beneficial. Um, but for me, the heat worked really, really well. Even before I had the heating pad, they just gave me um, extra warm blankets. And I just kind of propped those on my stomach and, and treated them as if they were a heating pad. But of course, they get cool in just a couple minutes. So definitely, definitely a heating pad. And if you prefer ice packs, then ice packs. Last thing in this comfort category is this water bottle. Um, it was, I'm so glad I got this one because of the straw. Um, I was worried that I didn't, I wasn't going to want to tip my head and stuff. And that's exactly what happened. My incision is like my entire abdomen, right? So with a regular water bottle, there's a lot of this. Well, that pulls a lot on your abdomen. And especially the first couple days, I wasn't even sitting up straight, basically. Um, I was laying down for the most part. Well, it's kind of hard to drink while you're laying down. This, I could drink just like that and not have to move your body. So definitely a water bottle with a straw. Um, the first day I was only on the liquid, liquid diet so I drank, I drank a lot of water normally, but that whole week that I was in the hospital, I probably drank maybe six of these a day because you, you need to get your kidneys functioning again, your kidneys working and, um, all that stuff, right? So you need to drink water and, and stay on top of your hydration, really. Moving on to the second category, um, the clothes category. So like I said, I had only packed one outfit, a couple pairs of underwear and a couple pairs of socks. Uh, and I didn't really use any of it. Basically I was in a gown pretty much the entire time. I did end up switching into my own t-shirt first and then, cause I had a catheter right up until Monday. I was released on Tuesday. So I had a catheter in right up until Monday. So obviously I went, didn't wear underwear the entire time. Um, the socks, I, I think I only wore like one pair because I only wore them when I was up walking when I was in bed because it was so hot and stuff I took them off and then the clothes 
like I said, I did kind of change into my clothes after I was up walking and stuff, more or less just because I wanted to get out of the gown. I wanted to kind of feel more like myself. So I had loose fitting scrubs on like what I wore to the hospital. Um, just loose fitting scrubs and a t-shirt, like a very loose fitting t-shirt because of the incisions and whatnot. I didn't try pants for the first little bit because again, with the catheter and stuff, I didn't know how that was gonna work. But then I did experiment and uh, it worked out fine. As well, that house coat that I brought, it was extremely comfortable, but we're in the middle of summer, so it was so warm, especially when I was up walking, walking outside and stuff, I was just sweating like crazy. And I didn't want to take it off because at that time, I only had the hospital gown on, which is open at the back, right? So I had to get my husband to switch it out for a more light weighted one. Um, and then once I was putting clothes on. I didn't wear it at all, really. If you don't have a lightweighted house coat, like my nurse said, we could have just got a second gown and put it on the opposite way and just used it as a house coat. Now, moving on to the actual bag. The next category I'm calling activities. Uh, I mentioned that I brought a lot of video stuff. Um, I didn't do any of it. I did for the first, I'd say three, four days. I pretty much slept the entire time. Um, because I was getting pain shots every two hours. I would get my shot. I'd sleep for like an hour and a half. I'd be up for half an hour, get a shot, and the cycle repeated itself. So so for the first couple days, all I did was sleep. I didn't want to do anything. But I still had my laptop. The only thing I really used was my laptop, my AirPods, and my phone to watch videos and be on social media and that kind of stuff. My AirPods, obviously, I had a neighbor. I didn't want to disturb her with my shows. Um, and then, yeah, my laptop to just watch watch shows at night um, and, that, and, like, during the day and stuff. I didn't do any editing. I didn't do any video write, writing down stuff, like, nothing like that. However, I did end up using, like, these activity books. I, the last couple days when I was feeling better and I was weaning off the meds and I was up walking around and all that stuff and I wasn't sleeping as much, I did absolutely use these activity books quite a bit in between shows and visiting and doing whatnot. Um, I didn't read at all, but that was just more of a preference, I guess. I'm gonna show you how I set up all my chargers and my um, power bar and stuff. I just zip tied them to the side, like my bedside table, because I didn't want the power bar to be sitting on top of the table and have everything plugged in. I had my fan, my laptop charger, my phone charger, which I could switch between my phone and my AirPods, but I didn't want that sitting on top of the table as well as my fan, as well as my laptop, and needing that table for like writing things down or eating or anything like that. I didn't want it to really get in the way and possibly fall off the table and pull things down and stuff. So I actually just zip tied it to the side of the table. And I think that was a very genius idea that worked out so well, so, so well. And the last category is toiletries, I'm calling it. So um, basically just the non-essentials, essentials, whatever you want to call it. Um, so my ba makeup bag that I showed you, yeah, I didn't put makeup on. I think one day I put on some CC cream and mascara that was about it. And that was more or less just because I wanted to feel like I was feeling better. I was up walking. I kind of just wanted to do something with myself, right? So um, that's really the only time I even used that. Gum. This came in very handy on the first night, maybe the first two nights, uh, because I had the NG tube in the first night. So my throat and the fact that they have like the breathing tube down your throat while you're in surgery. My surgery went a little longer than normal because there was a small complication. So um, I had that breathing tube in even longer. And then, like I said, I had that NG tube in for over 24 hours. So, and you can feel that in your throat. It's the most uncomfortable thing. Every time I swallowed, I could feel it. So my mouth was dry, my throat was sore, and I couldn't eat anything until I think Tuesday night I was able to start eating solids. Um, but so this kind of just helped 
get some sort of flavor and, and whatnot into my system because I couldn't eat and I could really only drink water and that kind of stuff. This, I don't know, it just, it, it helps. So get yourself either some like hard candies or gum. Didn't use my eyeglasses at all. Lotion, this, thankfully I packed it because exactly what I thought was gonna happen happened. My skin got so dry. I don't know if it was like the medical stuff that they put on you while they cut you open or whatever it is. And my hand, even my hands, like I use this every day because it just, I just felt so dry all the time. Maybe it's the air or lack of air. I don't know what it is, but definitely lotion as well as the chapstick. I don't have it in here because I forgot it in my hospital table, but chapstick, I definitely used, especially the first day or two. Again, with the, the dry mouth and the dry lips and everything, the chapstick was my best friend for that first night or two. Sleep mask, I didn't really need it. I didn't use it at all. Um, I had an older lady as my neighbor and she pretty much slept all the time too. So our lights were barely ever on um, and the blinds were closed. So I didn't, I didn't really need it. And usually I have a problem with sleeping sleeping when people are still awake around me and things are going on around me. But again, with the medication and just my body working at healing, I had absolutely no problem sleeping. But if you do have a problem with like lights coming on and, and cause that did wake me up every time the nurses came in to check on my neighbor, it would wake me up. But whether I had that on or not, it probably would have done the same thing. So I didn't need it. I know when my mom was in the hospital, she really used it. So um, to, to each their own on that one, I guess. And then lastly, just this uh, toiletry bag. Um, again, I didn't use too much of it. Uh, hair elastic, just to put my hair up. Like I said, I had gotten my hair done right before I went, so I really didn't have to do much with it, but I, I was sweating every night. I don't know if it was the heat from the hospital on top of my heating pad, whatever it was. I was sweating every night, so I did end up throwing my hair up quicker than I had planned. Um, so really I just used some elastics. My hairbrush, of course, definitely deodorant and body spray. Melatonin, I didn't need. Um, my migraine meds, I didn't need. Thankfully, uh, the wipes and stuff just to freshen up. It was nice to have. I did try out this hydrating face mask just cause I was feeling good and I was just laying there one night and I was like, hmm, why not? Um, I had never used it before. I don't know what it's supposed to do, but it was cool to have. Not something you need, obviously. Um, and really the only, the only toiletries I really used was toothbrush and toothpaste and my deodorant and my brush. Um, I wasn't able to shower until I got home. So I didn't need any of that stuff. And I didn't really, like I said, I didn't wear makeup at all. So I didn't need to do any like deep facial cleaning or anything like that. The wipes worked for the most part. So yeah. Now, one thing I saw in some other videos, like I had said previously, there's no video like this on YouTube when it comes to this specific surgery. However, I, do, I had seen some with laparoscopy, laparoscopies. Um, and they mentioned gas X because they fill up your abdomen with air and you get a lot of gas bubbles. This surgery, they don't do that because it's actually an open surgery, but I still had a ton of gas bubbles in my recovery. That was probably like the worst issue I had with recovery, but that's for my, my other video. So the surgeon explained to me that it was more or less because they had moved everything out of the way and stretched it out and had to push it back in and stuff like that. So it was more or less just like inflammation and kind of settling back into place. So I don't know if any gas X or gas relief meds would have worked. Um, I asked the nurses and the doctors for it and they said that like they wouldn't give it to me. They did give me some spasm, like bladder spasm medication, um, but nothing for, for gas, gas pain, gas X kind of thing. Um, so I don't know if you want to try and bring it 
and use it, but I don't know if it would work because it's not necessarily gas panes, even though it feels like that, if that makes sense. So hopefully you got some answers from this video. Like I said, there was nothing at all like this on YouTube when I was looking to pack my hospital bag. So I didn't really know what I needed. I was just kind of guessing based on like when my mom was in surgery last year and that kind of stuff and just what I need for day-to-day -day essentials. Now you know what I used, what I didn't use and what I had forgotten that I definitely needed like my heating pad. Um, I would highly, highly suggest if you are going in for the surgery, that water bottle with a straw and the heating pad and a fan, well, depending on your comfort and the way you sleep, but the heating pad and the water bottle were the two main things that saved me during recovery. So hopefully this helped. Hopefully this gave you some answers. If you've been following along on my medical journey, I do have my surgery and recovery vlog coming up next. Um, I've already filmed that and that's ready to go, but I wanted to get this one up first. But moving off the medical stuff, if you like Cricut and Disney and mummy hacks and that kind of stuff, that's usually what my channel is about. And that's what I'm going to get back to now that I'm healing up and, and feeling better. So hopefully you can hit that subscribe button and join the squad. If you got any good information out of this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really is a free way that you can help support my channel. Can't wait to start making my normal content now that I'm starting to feel better. It is still going to take a couple weeks for me to be 100% better, but I'm getting there one day at a time. Follow me on all my socials to see updates and how I'm, how I'm recovering and that kind of stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.